Step inside the Pantheon in Rome, and you're surrounded by an engineering marvel. Towering above is a vast concrete dome, wider than most modern buildings, pierced at its center by a 9-meter oculus that floods the space with sunlight, all held together without a single piece of steel reinforcement. This structure, along with the Colosseum and the aqueducts, has survived for nearly 2,000 years, enduring earthquakes, wars, and the relentless passage of time. Now, contrast that with our own cities. We see cracks in our pavement, crumbling concrete on bridges and buildings needing major repairs after just 50 or 60 years. We consider our technology to be the peak of human achievement, yet our most fundamental building material seems to have an expiration date. This poses an incredible question. How is it possible that ancient Roman concrete has outlasted our own by centuries? For decades, we thought their secret recipe was lost to history. But now, thanks to new technology, scientists have finally reverse-engineered this ancient supermaterial. And the truth is more ingenious than we ever imagined. To understand what made Roman concrete, Opus Cementitium, so special, we first need to know its key ingredient. Modern concrete is made from a simple mix, a binder called Portland cement, water, and aggregates like sand and gravel. The Romans had a secret weapon. Deep in the hills of Italy, particularly around the city of Pozzuoli near Mount Vesuvius, they discovered a special kind of volcanic ash. They called it Pozzolana. The great Roman architect and engineer Vitruvius, writing in the first century BC, was in awe of its seemingly magical properties. There is also a kind of powder which, from natural causes, produces a Astonishing results. This substance, when mixed with lime and rubble, not only lends strength to buildings of other kinds, but even when piers of it are constructed in the sea, they set hard under water. Vitruvius knew they had found something special, but he didn't know why. We now know that this volcanic ash is incredibly rich in silica and alumina. When mixed with lime and water, it triggers a powerful chemical reaction it grows a unique, interlocking, crystalline structure that is far stronger, more stable, and more chemically resistant than modern concrete. This was their revolutionary binder, but it was only half the secret. For years, when scientists studied Roman concrete, they were puzzled by small, white, pebble-like chunks embedded everywhere in the mix. They called them lime clasts and assumed they were a sign of sloppy work, evidence that the Romans hadn't mixed their materials properly. But a groundbreaking 2023 study revealed the truth. These white chunks weren't a mistake. They were the key. The evidence now shows the Romans likely used a technique called hot mixing. Instead of just mixing slaked lime, they may have added quicklime directly to the mix. This reaction generates intense heat, creating these brittle lime clasts throughout the structure. And this is where the genius lies. They gave the concrete something like an immune system. When a tiny crack forms in the Pantheon's dome and water seeps in, it finds one of these millions of lime clasts. The water reacts with the lime, creating a calcium carbonate solution that quickly hardens, filling the crack before it can spread. The concrete literally heals itself. The Roman historian Pliny the Elder marveled at the durability of Roman structures without ever knowing the microscopic process at work. What is more, as soon as this powder comes in contact with the waves of the sea and is submerged, it becomes a single stone mass, impregnable to the waves, and every day stronger. Pliny was right. The most spectacular proof of Roman concrete superiority is found where our modern materials fail most, in salt water. The Romans built massive harbors piers and breakwaters directly into the open sea, like the incredible port at Caesarea Maritima. Modern concrete rapidly erodes and corrodes in salt water, but Roman concrete thrives in it. Earlier studies of Roman harbor concrete showed that seawater seeping into the concrete triggers a secondary reaction with the pozzolanic ash, growing rare, interlocking minerals like altobermorite that make the structure even stronger over time. 
the very thing that destroys our concrete made theirs more powerful. So, the secret of Rome's enduring buildings wasn't one thing, but a series of brilliant innovations, the perfect volcanic ash, a likely hot mixing technique that enabled self-healing, and a chemical composition that turned its greatest enemy, seawater, into an ally. So why did we ever stop using it? With the fall of the Western Empire, the precise large-scale Roman recipe and techniques disappeared for over a thousand years, but today scientists are studying Roman concrete as a blueprint for the future. By rediscovering Rome's secrets, we may soon be able to build our own self-healing structures that can last for millennia. The enduring legacy of Rome lives in its monuments and in the extraordinarily durable stone that still holds them together after 2000 years. What other ancient technologies do you want me to investigate? Let me know in the comments below. Special thanks to my Patreon members. Your support makes all of this possible. If you enjoyed this trip back in time and want to help me keep these videos coming, please be sure to hit like and subscribe for more fast history and of course, consider supporting the channel on Patreon. Thanks for watching.